Howdy, and welcome back to episode six of Roundup. Uh, after a short little, I wouldn't call it a hiatus. We're just busy people, uh, you know, with uni and all that crap, right? But uh, yeah, you know, yeah. last time we went to record two weeks ago, there wasn't really a lot going on. But this time around, we've kind of shot ourselves in the foot because we've got so much to get through. Um, but yeah. of course, we're both back. I'm Schley, uh, and this is uh, Toosbees. How are you this week, Luther? I'm good. I'm good. Um, it's been, you know, it's been a bit busy the last few weeks doing a bunch of different stuff, doing, um, you know, me personally d- coming back, doing the Nova Invitational for a very, very different but similar game that is inferior in many ways. Um, but I, I, I have no idea what game you're talking about. It must be very uh, popular, don't know. I guess. All I know, guess not. All no. I know is Counter-Strike. And yeah. a lot of Counter-Strike has happened in the last month it's been since 100%. we shot the last episode. A whole month without roundup uh, uh I, w- I feel i feel bad for all of you who don't have haven't had that episode to listen to to get you through no I've i agree a, i've had a bunch of people asking um what actually happened i had like a few people ask so yeah uh, thank thanks to everyone who uh, has been showing support even in the absence of our episodes um who's wanted roundup back and we're going to be getting back onto the regular schedule every two weeks of course it's always a lot of fun to be doing these podcasts always a lot of fun to be going through all of the stuff in AUCS and speaking of the stuff in AUCS there's so much that's happened yeah that we just have a lot to unpack so um pretty solid episode we've got planned out no feature piece this week so if you're here for those unfortunately we don't have that but we do have a cheeky surprise we do have a cheeky surprise <laughs> at the end but we've also got some solid news roster moves solid results to go through whole bunch of crazy stuff really so um yeah. yeah lots has changed um but just before we jump into it something that hasn't changed is uh this show is brought to you uh in partnership with uh obviously snowball esports you know who run the show for us but um mm. also massive support from blue microphones uh for powering the show and making uh making me sound very very beautiful um so massive shout out to them as always uh, but I guess we'll jump into hot off the press. I don't know yeah. the last time we actually had something that was kind of significant enough to be hot off the press, but we've got some really big ESIC news that, you know, we allude to every episode. Oh, this is might be happening. Something might be coming up. Something's actually happened this time, which Crazy. is which is ridiculous. Um, yeah. You know, they're they're so, working on Valve time, which is, you know, uh, now it's just ESIC time, right? Uh, yeah, so, yeah, new measurement getting in, um, invented here. I mean... For context, uh, today, when we're recording this episode on the 25th of April, today is day 93 since the January 22nd bans. Um, Many people in the community have been keeping count of this, of course, because it's been so long and so drawn out, this process of what's happened. But in the last week or two, we've had a bunch of different things happen. So let's let's walk through. Let's talk through the timeline of events. So um, last about last week, I believe it was... um, around then after it was pointed out how many days there were it was about it was about two weeks ago after it was pointed out how many days had p- passed it was on day 77 at that point out of what seemed like at least front facing pretty much nowhere really a sudden outburst of frustration and tweets towards Isik was voiced on twitter and through social media and with a few reddit posts and things like that by multiple players um, most notably, of course, uh, the the very uh, charismatic and smiling Rothelko, you all know him, uh, making a Twitter thread about how he was very done with the way that his band was handled, that got international attention. It got 1.4k likes on Twitter, which is absolutely huge for Australian CS. Um, so obviously, that that whole thing blew up. We saw a bunch of tweets from some ESIC band players, some players that weren't affiliated with the ESIC band players, like Fiend stepping in, um, a bunch of tweets pretty much going, what is happening here, right? But unlike uh, any of this uh, previous frustration that had been voiced before, this caught the attention of multiple international CS personalities, people who were working in the big leagues, right? Um, people like Gomez, uh, people like Frankie, Professor, uh, yeah. all voicing their support, uh, Ryan from Rushby Media, uh, all voicing their support for the players who have been waiting at that point 77 days before they'd received many of them had received any of their evidence before any of these there was a tweet that went out i believe i i don't have it uh here but i do remember seeing it was a public tweet 
saying there were nine different deadlines that Isik had pushed back on that they had missed throughout this period of time. So pretty much a whole bunch of things just came out all at once, um, shouting from every direction. And that was enough to finally get a public statement coming out from Ian Smith, the com- head commissioner of ESIC, basically, in short, apologizing for the delay, saying, we're sorry for not having sorted this out sooner. And pretty soon after that, we finally, finally got some unbans. Finally, players got some of their evidence. There were many who had gotten their emails, many who are still receiving their emails, some who are yet to receive their emails. But out of the 35 players banned on January 22nd, as of right now, 21 of those players have had their sentences reduced to zero. The first of these players who got announced publicly was Prodigy. He played Vertex's opening match uh, in LPL, which basically broke the news that um, some players were starting to get unbanned. More players got unbanned. Rofflico was one of them, and he played an ESCA Premier against Direwolves to kind of kick off the news over on Conky's stream, playing that game out. There are also two players who weren't in that ban wave, uh, Maker and Steven, who were banned in October 2020. They were also unbanned at the same time. And then a day later, after 19 of these, so 19 of these bans, unbans came in. Um, and those were, those players were, and so it's a big list, it's a big list, but it's worth, you know, <laughs> it's, it's worth going through it to clear these players' names to talk about, like, because these players have had their names dragged through the mud for, um, at that point, 70 plus days, right? So these players are free. Um, as of April 15th, Maker, Matrix, Reckons, Rofflco, MDK, JCG, Jamie, Bowie, Josh A, Vax, Meta, MSN, Prodigy, J- uh, JCR, Pez, and Steven, all freed on that day. Two day or a day later, Motion and Dell were also unbanned separately. And yeah, this has just been absolutely huge. That's forty uh, percent of the players that were banned on that day um, getting unbanned. Or it's, at least having the sentences reduced to zero. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, I added a little, like, sort of interesting aside um, when I was going through this story in that uh, you mentioned, obviously, Frankie, Ryan Rushby Media, all them sort of mm. started to get involved. And I think it's important to note that there's a lot more heat and uh, spotlight on ESIC at the moment as um, a similar thing is starting to unravel in North America, where CS is a lot more uh, normalized, a lot more people involved. So... I think the the fire under E6 ass is kind of like, let's wrap up yeah. this AU shit yeah. so we can focus on the NA stuff. Um, but yeah, and I'll pull up, you know, uh, I, I completely agree. It's important to uh, sort of give a voice back to these players who I agree. The names have sort of been dragged through the mud in the sense that it's like they were banned from playing. Um, and while Ian Smith, his uh, public statement, he goes on to say, none of he, he says none of the ESIC bans were false, um, but there's a very sort of uh, big shift mm. in their approach, and they don't want to be doing these massive bans now, um, and they're they're opting for your yeah, education over over discipline. Um, but what I'm looking for and looking forward to um, is at the end of the uh, it's called the notification of players process. So I assume when everyone is notified about their um, you know the changes in their ban. Uh, Isik should hopefully give us a, a nice statement, sort of hopefully clarifying all this, these little bits and pieces, um, hopefully in one place, tell us well, who's still banned and for how long. Um, but for the most part, and after talking to you know people, players in the community, um, I think this is a, a bit of a victory. Um, and I think everyone, yeah. everyone should feel, uh, maybe not happy, but really relieved at least. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, uh, one thing I will jump in on there was that, yes, all of the players involved, according to tweets from both Ian Smith and from Mr. Carmody, MJ Carr, who's been absolutely in, um, absolutely done a tremendous job representing these players. Some players have even said that they don't think this would have happened without him. So big shout outs to uh, Mr. Michael Carmody, uh, absolute king for his work in this. But one of the tweets he made was that uh, one of the main reasons why uh, these unbanded ha- sort of happened was that while each one of the players that was on that list did technically violate the ESIC code, that yeah. is true, none of the bans were technically false if you go by ESIC's rulebook. 
but uh, there was, quote, some non-alignment between Isik and some of its partners, and due to this non-alignment, the commissioner has chosen not to apply the full weight of the punishment for the sanction that could have been applied. So what I personally uh, assume that is, is that it's the same sort of thing that was being talked about very early on, where uh, the ESCA rulebook and um, the main rulebooks that players were looking at, especially in ESCA Open, did not align and did not have the same rules as the ESIC rulebook. They were actually contradictory, and some players were told things that did contradict with the ESIC rulebook. So that's how I interpreted that statement. Um, I think that's a pretty fair interpretation of why it's gone this way. But it's still an absolute huge win for AUCS, and this is going to have yeah. a tremendous knock-on effect for a while, both the uh, ban and on ban process, and be a monumental event in the shaping the course of Australian Counter-Strike as we know it, but this is absolutely huge. This is just absolutely yeah. huge. It's really good to see. Um, yeah. I think this is awesome segue because, you know, now we're getting to see a lot of these players uh, transition back into teams, um, seeing motion associated with Chiefs at the moment, although nothing's official, um, but uh, the return of, of James Rofflco, don't have his last name handy, uh, no. to to Vertex, it's, it's awesome to see. It really is. Um, so I think, you know, at the moment, it's maybe, maybe 21, a couple of weeks, it might be more. But um, at the start, it was our entire grassroots had just been ripped out from under us. And yeah. now we're getting all these roster moves coming back and sort of, uh, you know, some players are getting removed um, from the teams that they were like filling in for, but uh, largely it's good. Um, but we'll, we'll jump straight into the biggest move, I think, that's happened as a result of the ESIC uh, news. And yeah, that is the return of Rofflco. I'm super fucking stoked to, <laughs> to see him back, it. man. It's been, it's been really nice to see. I did um, a short interview with him uh, for some other stuff um, that might, might see the light of day um, soon. But, uh, you know, okay. <laughs> he's super, super keen to be back, um, you know, without, without doing anything... Well, he, he said he's back full-time playing, which just, it got me yeah. so fired up. I'm so excited. Um, I just downloaded the his first game back. Uh, I've downloaded the GoTV demo, and I'm going to have a look at it later, I think. Um, but yeah, obviously, uh, he slots straight back into the lineup. Um, and then we've also got APOC uh, coming onto the, the lineup in place of your Wombat. So what do you think of Vertex? Well, look... Um... So again, that lineup, Brace, PZ, Addict, Rolfelco, Apoch, Dud. That's a really stacked lineup, I feel like. Um, oh, yeah. While you could probably say that like someone like Order or even um, depending on Chiefs' new fifth to replace Apoch, Dud, how that goes, um, there are stacked players across all of these. But I think Vertex now is getting to the point where they're starting to... They want to take back the position they held in 2020 before all this shit happened, right? Yeah, 100%. Where before all the ESIC bans happened, Vertex were kind of... They were almost on this storyline of about to break into that top echelon of Australian CS. Obviously, having Rofflco, one of the star players, taken out of the equation, um, getting banned, taken out for those few months, um, obviously threw that whole thing out of order, right? But now, with this lineup, I mean... I think there's going to be some really good results to come from this. I'm really keen to see how they play. James, um, while he hasn't been around playing actively during his ban, he's one of those players that he's got a pretty extensive knowledge and uh, very is very mechanical in terms of, like, he's a really sharp aimer, he's really sharp, like, got a really good game sense. Um, he's one of those players that really stands out, and I think at that time before the ban stood out as one of those players who would maybe go on to maybe get picked up by a tier one team but now it seems the approach especially with this lineup is that vertex as a whole might start to really shift into this tier one team and i'm all for it i really want to see vertex put up a good performance i think now that they've finally got themselves a solid lineup because since the isic bands they've kind of been shifting around players left and right just to try and fill that void i think now that this lineup is finally finalized there's going to be so much to come from this and i cannot wait yeah I, I, it's interesting. I have a slightly different take on Vertex, but the overall sentiment's the same in that mm. toward the end of last year, um, I think that they were like a like a gatekeeper team, kind of like uh, old TSM, Australis, that core, where it's like every team below them, uh, they would punish, they would wreck them, except for Rooster. Yeah. Um, but everyone above yeah. them, yeah, you're right, they couldn't break into the top. 
And then you've had this weird couple of months. So I think it's going to take a little bit of time with the pieces, right? Oh, yeah. yeah um, but time, they're, but... they're back this time around. And um, I, I agree. Rufflco is a huge part of Vertex's identity. But every time I talk to the players, it's also like in the mid rounds. It's this mm. extensive game knowledge you just spoke about. But it's his ability to, you know, calm everyone down. It's his hype. It's his, um, you know, everyone. Uh, I have a quote somewhere. I think it's from Brace saying that everyone in the team of Vertex really wants to emulate James and how he is within the team, um, which is like super good because, you know, there's a lot of issues with cohesion, um, all kinds of, I'm not going to say toxicity in this region, but uh, if the first step in making a team here is making sure it can stay together long term. Um, yeah. And this is even before getting into APOC Dud, who I think is going to bring so much experience um, to the team. Uh, I assume... Brace is going to continue to IGL, and I assume PZ is going to, you know, uh, continue to primary orb. But dude, their their double orb is lethal, man. It's it's awesome. It's almost as good as um, uh, when Ali was on order, like order and yeah. uh, having Rick and Ali on your team. This is this is really cool. So uh, I can definitely see them surpassing Chiefs, surpassing Direwolves, despite the fact I think they've lost their last like three games to Direwolves now. But um But to be fair, Direwolves are a very strong team too. Yeah, exactly. Like that's um, that's that's nothing that's like really unexpected. Yeah. So I don't know, I think things are only gonna go up for Vertex, uh yeah. based on all that. And I, I'm excited to get into some demos and have a look at it in the next, you know, couple games they play. They've got their ANZ champs match tomorrow. Uh, on the 26th, so that's against Dynasty, and that'll get them a spot into the final four. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, where does that leave the Chiefs losing APOC, Dad? I mentioned it before. We know that Motion has in some way been part of the team, subbing in here and there, I believe, but I've seen nothing official yet. Um, yeah. And I haven't, I haven't been able to speak to anybody about it, so mm. I'm not sure what Chiefs do from here. Yeah, well, as of right now, they've got Motion on, who, as as we said before, just got unbanned. He's fresh, out, yeah. you know, fresh back into it. Um, I think kind of also that, like, uh, we'll talk about that in a sec, but um, just all these new players coming in definitely going to shake up the team. Yeah. But with the Chiefs specifically, that means with all of these players getting unbanned and with many of them going LFT, they've got a pretty wide talent pool to look at as yeah. far as... They don't need to rush and pick someone up. Exactly, exactly. Um, so far, Motion has seemingly been able to, like, pick up some of the ropes and, like, in a short amount of time, be able to do well subbing in. So, you know, if, uh, if Jeremy gets picked up for Chiefs, if that was just hy hypothetically happen, if they feel happy having him as the fifth and they're just like, you know what, let's just roll with this, that'd be an absolutely huge step up for him as well. But I think it would bring a lot to Chiefs. Um, you know, he's a pretty experienced player in... Um, maybe not the tier one sense per se, but he's like very fresh to try and, um, you know, he's hungry, f hungry for those wins. He's like got that motivation behind him that, uh, like trying to break into this real top, like top org sense of the scene. Right. So I think that he could be an interesting pickup, but there's so many different availabilities, possibilities for chiefs that even though they've just lost APOC done, which definitely is a blow to them, I think. Yeah. They've got so many different places they can look for to find a new fifth. And, you know, it's kind of it's kind of uh, difficult to see what they will do just because there's so many different things they can do that it just comes down to what they feel like. Role-wise, what do you think they're looking for? Because I imagine, I imagine Hugh's going to IGL because I understand that yeah. it was going between him and Tom for a while. Um, but, yeah, it's I don't know what they're going to look for, but... I assume they'll pick someone up based on who they like the most and then work out the roles after the fact. Because that seems to be how things really go here is pick yeah. the most preferred candidate and then then think about the roles. I mean, many many players and many IGLs talk about how they think that one of the most important things going into pick, uh, pickups for a team nowadays is personality and yeah. how you mesh with the, uh, with the team. Yeah. Um, like going back to that Vertex example, one of the reasons 100%. why Rafalco is such a good fit there, and that's been stated in interviews and things like that, is that, look, if you've ever talked to James, you know he's just the most fucking positive person out there. I'm yet to like ever just see a photo of him where he just doesn't have this giant grin on his face. Like yeah. he's, and but like the thing is, is that he obviously brings that to the server as well. Like, um, 
he obviously brings in this kind of like um positive experience and it shines through his teammates as well because he's like lifting them up with that and i think that's an, a really good example of where personality over over uh statistics and things like that is where teams can start to look at obviously i'm not part of chiefs i don't know how emotion um how jeremy is going with fitting in um to that sense but you know if it is going well and he's performing well then that could definitely be something that's like well we already got him to sub you know why not just grab him he's you know not tied with any team at the moment yeah um last year was playing with i think was control and obviously that fell apart because of the easy bands um so yeah why not just go for it if that's what they feel like but there's so many again with 21 of those 35 players being unbanned plus another two from those um from previous bands uh before january getting lifted there's a wide talent pool there's there's even a talent pool in there to even just make whole teams made up of those (laughs) unbanned players like there's that much of a talent pool to pick from like there's so many crazy things that'll happen and i think that leads into um talking a bit more broadly is to the next roster shuffle overall for the oc region yeah i yeah we'll get to it in a second when we're talking about uh premier and all that but a big thing that happened at the start of this year when this all happened was there's just so many half teams so many dead teams Mm. um so i think there will be a lot of shuffle uh, well, there might be a lot of shuffling. I think a lot of the teams might up the top might settle for what they've got and maybe make one or two changes, but we're not going to be seeing these sort of like, oh, you know, Chiefs need to add two, uh, Die Wolves need to add two, you know, all that kind of stuff. I don't think we're going to be having Dexter getting plucked out. I don't think we have another example like that anytime soon as mm-hmm. well. So I think it's sort of a lot more balanced coming back, right? Yeah, no, for sure. I think, I think it's going to be very interesting to see where things go from yeah. here on out. Um, there's just so many, so many different possibilities. Like I keep saying it because it's true. Like there's just it's kind of hard to like look at or make predictions right now because could go any any which way. Because yeah, well, with all of this happening, the scene is incredibly unpredictable at the moment. Like things are going to be just, especially as we get to the end of uh, the LPL season, which we're about to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we get to the end of Ains and Champs. I think there's going to be. I personally think there's going to be a huge roster shuffle coming in. I think there's going to be a bunch of different players swapping teams, and you know uh, that top there, those East, formerly Isaac band players making their way back in, um, getting rotated onto teams. Many of them already playing, already subbing in for teams. I think we're going to see some of them start to find permanent positions. I think the only one that's been really picked up and back in the game on the top team straight away was obviously Rockleco, but yeah. beyond that. There are just so many possibilities as to um, what, what will happen and so many availabilities that I think a roster shuffle is inevitable. 100%. Um, let's pick up on the that LPL. Let's hop, skip, and jump yeah. into some events. <laughs> um, and yeah, we'll start with the LPL Pro. Uh, again, personally, I just haven't really been following it. So, <laughs> so you're going to have to pick up the slack here. But I, I, no, I have been keeping an eye on it. Um, you know talking about before you know vertex i wouldn't say bombed out of it but you know they were doing some experimental stuff here with all of their yeah. different uh in like you know in between rosters but yeah well that's um, the thing was that they were just vertex specifically they brought on prodigy briefly like for um for a game they brought on like a bunch of different players they didn't have they before they dropped out um and got eliminated from lbl they did not play at all with the current roster they have with apoc dud if yeah um Unless I'm wrong, um, I'm saying that off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure they didn't. Um, but what we do see at the moment, if we not going to go through every match because obviously month through episodes, uh, we need to do a little bit of skipping over things. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where we are right now for LPL, we're currently in the finals, toward moving towards the finals. Right, we've just seen Chiefs uh, take out best of three in the upper semifinals against Animal Squad. And Dire Wolves uh, taking a 2 1 win in the upper semifinals against Paradox, knocking them both down to the lower finals, which will pick up again on Tuesday. We're going to be seeing Animal Squad versus Bizarre, Paradox versus Exto in the lower bracket to move forward to Wednesday's lower final. We're also going to be seeing the upper final on Wednesday, which has already been decided. That's Chiefs versus Dire Wolves, which I think will be a very interesting series, especially with Chiefs still playing with motion, uh, as far as I'm aware. They've been playing this whole finals with motion, so. 
yeah, some very interesting matches to come out uh, here. The fin- the format is interesting as well. Um, it's going to be so a best of five grand final in the end, um, which the winner of that uh, Chiefs versus Direwolves game will go through to with a 1-0 map advantage. And uh, that lower bracket to get sorted out. There's some interesting games to come ahead here. Chiefs has ha- have had a really good run going through uh, so far. But Direwolves as well, really showing themselves to be quite strong. Paradox taking a map of Direwolves, though. This, uh, and taking the 2-0 against Riot. The one thing I like about LPL is that there's no there's no order in the sense that there's no, you know, order aren't just going to cruise through the final. I think mm. uh, for the most part, a lot of these games can go, and some of them do go, you know, anyway. Um, yep. So I'm excited to watch a final. Um that doesn't just have a super one-sided like our uh, order are probably going to win mm. this kind of thing um yeah because order is still just on top and just dominating everything at the moment like, yeah order is just that they're just they're just so fucking good right now <laughs> like you, like like they're just they're just at their absolute peak at the moment especially you know since they brought in declan as well yeah uh, really great fit for the team uh um, we'll, we'll, t- we'll, t- we'll talk about order um as yeah. we get into esa premier because that's all wrapped yeah, so um, the finals of that was it was a couple of days ago now. Um, there'll be a there'll hopefully be an article coming out uh, very shortly on Snowball about it. Um, but it's a very similar format to LPL. It's you know we had the bracket play, we got into the final um, where order with a one map advantage. Uh, we're up against the Chiefs, um, and they won that. I think they Chiefs managed to get one map, and then order uh, sort of just cleaned out the rest. Um, mm. And it was sort of another day at the office for them. So, yeah, um, I did manage to also get a hold of, of Ricke. Uh, I'm going to quickly pull up that uh, wherever I put that. But um, <laughs> I don't know. I think in terms of that, and I've got a video somewhere on my YouTube channel uh, where I was talking about, um, you know, who, who all the strong teams are at the moment. I think it was for ANZ champs. And I just said it's. I would be super surprised if – order didn't just win everything um yeah rick says you know they're very happy with how the year's been going um their expectations are kind of they wouldn't really be satisfied with anything other than first which is sometimes Mm. a dangerous sort of thing to say because as soon as you don't get first it's like oh why what happened are we not good enough are we slipping um but until that happens you know things are going quite well um and of course like you said bringing in uh declan he said that they're very very happy with um, his addition to the team, his knowledge, uh, yeah. his overall ability is just very good. And considering how young he is, um, it's just been so good. And they're, they're super happy in the team. If you are watching those order videos that they do, um, mm. where you get to hear their comms and he's just yelling and being ridiculous. And then you can just hear like, you know, Carlo and Rick in the background sort of just being a little more like, you know, calm, collected, and yeah. then Declan's just popping off. It must be, <laughs> like, so, so much fun to be in that team right now. Um, I mean, on on that on a side note there, absolutely loving the content coming out of Order and coming out of this uh, lineup. Just see, this, getting to see this that. Is that's like, yeah, this is not an Order plug. I know I'm wearing <laughs> oh, yeah, a hoodie. No, no, no. It's cold, yeah. You say that as you're literally wearing an Order hoodie, but yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, absolutely loving like to see um, because through that we're seeing a lot of these players' personalities shine through, especially Declan, who very yeah. much has a lot of that personality to shine through, right? Um, I think it's, it's, it's important now for these yeah. teams. It, order, the storyline of last year was that Renegades were just punching down because they were trapped here and they were significantly better than everyone else. So it's nice mm. for them to get the breathing room and show that uh, they were definitively number two, and if Renegades yeah. aren't here, they will they will happily be top dog until they return. Um, yeah. But yeah. outside of order winning the whole thing, um, I think there were some other really interesting storylines. Um, do you have any? Do you want to pick up off? I, I've got a couple, but do you have any you want to pick up on there? Or I mean, yeah, as you've like as we've seen Paradox as well. Um, yeah, playing loving playing Paradox. Time. Yeah, Paradox at the moment have been really strong both in the SCA and they've shown some good results in LPL. Again, set, as we saw before, taking a map off Direwolves. Um, Paradox right now are looking to kind of just cement themselves to be in that top three, four, right? Which they did at the, at the th- third place finish they got and Direwolves at, at fourth too. I think Direwolves as well, they've just had kind of consistent results but still been, you know, 
Um, I think it's still just been the same old story of order and chiefs kind of neck and neck for top position really yeah, yeah, but, 100%. but unlike um maybe years past where it was chiefs overtaking the top team every now and then and like kind of just swapping back and forth order has just been consistently beating chiefs and then chiefs been able to pretty well consistently beat everyone else yeah um but underneath that you know some interesting stories we've seen come out um i think that riot um that even though they've had some unfortunate stuff come up they had to ff a game recently because one of their players got sick they've had um some things happen like in that regard but they've still been showing themselves to be pretty solid around that tier around that echelon of teams where they're kind of sitting um silix silix is a team that has been just interesting to look at in mvl for a number of reasons because they've had a very fluid shifting around roster but their players that very much so have this drive to go forward. Um, talking to Keo, one of their players, about like um, some of the things that they've come come up against, how they're currently you know looking for one, they're looking to try and pick up their new fifth because they're still like trying to work out some of the kinks in their roster. I think they have a lot of potential to succeed in that um, that section of um, that that kind of um, part of the ladder, if you will if they're just able to nail down the solid five, they're able to just kind of get some of those results, start building things back up. And they've got, you know, they've got some experience there. They've got Yellow, for example, who's leading them. They've got some fresh talent as well, like Keo, as I mentioned, who's, you know, fairly fresh to the top end of the scene. I think that's where a lot of the most interesting stories this uh, premier season have been. But I think the more interesting stories are going to come looking into the next season, really. Yeah, well, I think... I, I agree with a lot of that, actually. Um, I think yeah. the, the Dials, for me, uh, the the two teams that I like look at. There's I'm not surprised by, it, but I you know, well, one of them I am is Paradox. I think they are by far the most improved team in 2021 yeah. so far. I'm actually like fully happy to say that. Um, yeah, I agree. But the the Dials project, I remember. You know, it's some people go, it's just X Avant. Not really. It's like three new players. Mm. Um, but you know, we were saying there could be, you know, uh, three teams all sort of competing for that number one spot. I don't know how they've managed to sort of fall flat with it, but it just has fallen a little bit flat for me. Um, they win the games I think they're going to win and they lose the games that they probably should lose and they don't really, you know, they take a map here and there, but I'm not overly... I'm impressed with the individuals and all that, but it's like overall as a team, it's I, I, I want to see them do some more stuff yeah. before I'm ready to go. Hell yeah, Diables. Um, that's, but that's yeah, fair. that's fair. Um, the next season, like season 37 of Premier is, I think, 10 days away. Um, I didn't realize they are like, they start so close together, but they it, sort of have to because that top spot, if you come first, you can qualify into um, Pro League season 14. So I guess they're, they're under a time frame. Um, but we have the top 11 teams from season 36 moving on. Um, yep. And they will reappear. And then we've got uh, the last five teams to make 16. They pull four from uh, relegation. Um, and then they also pull the winner of Open um, in uh, to create the full 16. So um, the relegation teams were Simplicity, uh, Caught Off Guard, Memento, and a personal favorite of mine, BBBMBCVS. You love saying that name. Oh, really bro, love. I am... Look, season 37 <laughs> of ESE Premier is going to be the season where BBB, MB, CBS really show their chops. Um, and then, of course, the team oh, qualifying through... Fantastic name. ...through Open was, um, was Hazard Esports. So yeah. I am just fingers crossed. Oh, this is what I was talking about before where, you know, there's probably going to be some roster shuffles, but please, 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 can we just have a season of ESE Premier where there's, like, no dead teams... The full 16, you know, there's none of these silly buggers because I've never been so hyped for Premier. I think the yeah. stakes are really good. I think the scene right now, it's not perfect, but it's uh, it's 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 good. It's um, at where it's like at one of the most interesting points we've ever seen it. For for better or for worse, after the E6 stuff, right? Yeah. It's, it's created a lot of opportunities for some of those players to slot in while these players were taken out. And then because some of these players have been on bend now it's kind of forcing a shuffle it's unfortunate yeah. that obviously things went down like that but that's just the knock-on effects that having such a wide talent pool taken out for um so long and then now getting um partially slotted back in yeah um 
is just gonna have have on on the scene really in the state of things but i think at the same time as unfortunate as it is like all these events have happened it leaves i think just the the scene itself very interesting to watch at the moment it makes a lot of these leagues very interesting to watch i think overall like there's a lot of like the quality of uh cs the quality of production that we're seeing has gotten to the point where australian cs is the most fun to watch right now than i think it's ever been especially with uh anz champs um where um that's that's been really interesting but yeah with uh with with regards to ESCA, and we'll get into NZ champs in a moment, but with regards to ESCA, they um, it's been really interesting seeing how this season's gone because it's been kind of, you know, haphazard. Yeah, yeah. But now, I think we should hopefully be seeing a much more solid season coming out. We're going to see obviously yeah. a lot of roster moves, um, but also with order, um, with order winning uh, this season coming up, I believe. Um, if they get that, they also get themselves a spot into ESL Pro League season yeah, 14. They automatically so, claim the spot. Yeah. So, for example, like we'll say hypothetically that um, uh, that BBB, MB, CBS win season 37 of ESEA Premier. Can only hope, man. They, they will face off against uh, Order in a qualification match for that spot. Um, mm. And same with any other of the 15 teams. But if Order win it... Uh, because they won both seasons, they will automatically be granted that spot. So fingers crossed for my boys at BBB, MB, CBS. Yeah, I've said it enough times. I'm very happy. Just give give us one more, just just for that's BBB, <laughs> MB, CBS. Um, it's what, a shame. What a name. It's a shame they're not in A and Z champs, to be honest. Because bro, yeah. I would love to just hear them <laughs> have to say that all the time. Um, oh, I would. We'll jump in there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're pretty deep into. Uh, it's called the st- like stage two or sort of the second. It's it's uh, it's a bracket. It's a double elim. No, single yeah. elim bracket. Oh, maybe it is double. Anyway, um, <laughs> the, so eight teams made it through from Swiss, um, and they are now in uh, bracket play. It is double elim, um, and we've had two teams go through so far. So uh, from the top half, Direwolves managed to beat uh, Vertex in their upper bracket game, um, so they're through. And then Order beat Chiefs, so they're through. Um, and only four teams make it through to the final, which mm-hmm. has left uh, obviously Chiefs and Vertex. They've dropped down into the lower bracket, and they will be playing. Chiefs will play Paradox, and Vertex will be playing Dynasty um, tomorrow night, and that will decide who the final four are. Um, going into our semi-finals for uh, ANZ champs, so yeah, uh, I'm, I mean, I'm quite excited to be honest. It's it's flown by very quickly. Yeah. Um, having games sort of happen on Monday and Thursday, and they just sort of have been progressing through all the games almost like you know so fast that it's like wow, I can't believe it felt like last episode we were talking about you know oh there's still so many weeks left of ANZ champs anything yeah, can happen now but now it's like, it's like like you know two three more weeks and it's like over so yeah and we've only got six teams remaining because we've seen uh simplicity and riot get knocked out now and uh we're about to see another two teams get knocked out in that lower bracket yeah. but there's been i think some both interesting and predictable results coming out from this upper bracket i mean direwolves taking t- um their their path so far has been they took the 2-0 against Riot Gaming. They took the 2-0 against Vertex, and that's the new Vertex lineup with Apoc Dodd. Um, and that's also been... Um, that's, that's been interesting to see. Like, that's how they got through, right? They've looked pretty pretty good. But we've also seen Order. They've had a pretty similar path where they qualified with the 2-0 against Simplicity. Again, pretty expected, I think. Um, but Chief's actually taking a map off Order there, so... Um, they've definitely done the best but against Order so they far. They had to fight for it. It was a double OT yeah. on Mirage. So yeah, that was yeah. that was a twenty-two to eighteen game that Chiefs took. Which, holy shit, that's yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot of Mirage. That's a lot of Mirage. But that's how Order got through. So Chiefs versus Paradox. I think if if I'm predicting these ones, I would say I'd probably see Chiefs go through, even if they are still playing with Motion as the sub. I think that at the moment they're just time still kind of looking a bit more on par or with those top teams. But I think if there was any time for Paradox to pull off, I was just set, thinking the same thing. One hundred percent. The if, um, yeah. talking about if you look at everything, the upward trajectory being the most improved team. Chiefs, they're not down bad, but um, 
I think if they're going to prepare and Paradox will prepare, um, this is going to be probably one of the best games of ANZ champs this season for me personally. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I agree. I'm really I think excited. It's really great. Yeah, me too. Me too. I think um, I think Paradox they've definitely had themselves a bit more of a rough run in this bracket because getting put up against Vertex straight away, one of those teams that you really would expect to be able to make quite an interesting run there. Um, but they did get knocked down. Still kind of an unfortunate seed from them, for, for them, I suppose. But then being able to get against Chiefs here, yeah, I I think it could go it could go either way if Paradox really show up on the night. I think on paper you'd pr- still probably put Chiefs down as more likely. But I think yeah, it's that... Chiefs' game to lose, to be honest. Um... Yeah, yeah, I think I think Paradox could really show up and and surprise a lot of people um to get themselves that spot and i think they'll be very motivated to do so but then on the other side of the lower bracket as well in the match underneath that uh vertex versus dynasty i to be honest i think that vertex probably just gonna take that one putting all my channel points on vertex everybody just letting you know (laughs) yeah i think dynasty has been able to have some pretty good results this season but at least on paper for me i don't know how i feel about them being able to get through i mean dynasty um they they looked okay in their game against Simplicity, but even still, they looked shaky to start that one because they lost the first map, uh, sixteen to four. Yeah. Um, they did reverse sweep it with a sixteen to six on uh, six on Nuke and a sixteen to eleven on Overpass to knock out Simplicity. But looking at some of their results against even Chiefs as well, where sixteen three, you're kind of seeing some maps coming up against them in this bracket so far that have just been uh, really one sided and they've just kind of survived around that, but. I think, I think again, if there's any point at which Dynasty uh, will be looking to surprise people, I guess right now is the time to do it. Hey, this this year, I'm just having a look. Uh, Dynasty are yet to beat pretty much any of like the top six this year. Yeah. So um, I think it'll be a massive statement from them if they're to do it here and now. Um, yeah. But you know, otherwise, that's sort of the the frame that this match is being set in. It's kind of uh, it's a very uphill battle for Dynasty. You know, not that they're not a bad team. It's just the caliber that they're uh, able to beat is like doesn't really scale up to teams yeah, like Vertex, who yeah. you know will really test you. Um, but I, I still don't see a reason that won't be a, a good game as well. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And um, as far as as far as this whole bracket goes, so um, this is going to be unfolding over the next two weeks still. Uh, the grand final uh, to finish everything off is scheduled for May 9th, which is two weeks from today. So um, depending on our episode timing, um, might be bef- we might be recording next episode before or after that one happens. Yeah, um, we'll, we'll see how we go. Um, yeah, it depends on uh, how we go with it, I guess, and everything else around. But either we'll be talking a bit more ANZ champs and more of those results, or we'll be talking the whole bracket by the time you see us next. But those are some interesting games coming up, and those are some interesting results that have gone through on ANZ Champs. Um, ANZ Champs, I think this season has probably been one of the best seasons of ANZ Champs to watch, both from a um, from a quality of game standpoint and also how production's gone. How um, it's just been really fun watching. Like, I, I love the ESL talent. I love watching like all those guys just um, just make it really interesting. I love seeing the player cams. Yeah, um, they've I been the them. best edition, I think. Outside of Connect Four, I think the player cams have definitely <laughs> been the best yeah. edition. Yeah, player cams have been really great to see because like it's really enabled players to like uh shine through a lot of their personality onto the stream. Sorry, um, that's stupid. No, the, the player interviews they do afterwards using their player good. webcams. Yeah. There we are. There's the link. Um Yeah, that's the, the player interviews. There has been some like some hilarious ones. Um, but oh, there's yeah. also been some actually just really good, uh, sort of, you know, nuggets of information hearing about, you know, teams and rosters. Um, I've really been enjoying those. I think they've really nailed the, that content this, this time around. I mean, I think, um, personally that like, this has kind of looked like the most professional and most high quality that Australian CS has ever looked. Which is funny because the, the yeah. thing for ANZ champs this season was like, oh, we're going to make it more chill, which... I think has given it so much more identity and so much, um, mm, yeah. you know, it's so much more watchable. 
Not that it wasn't watchable, but I think it's more, uh, you know, I will happily chuck it on while I'm doing other stuff, while I'm DMing. Um, I mean, yeah, well, with with what you say about identity with it, I think it's been really great in that just because it's like, it's still so different to like, um, it doesn't feel like just a copy paste format of like what everyone's doing internationally. Yeah, the, like, for, when the you format like, change this yeah. season was really good. I feel like, um, but I mean, just with like the broadcast as well, I feel like yeah. when you're watching it, it doesn't have the same kind of, um, like they're trying to emulate um, what ESL overseas in Europe is trying to do. Like they're just trying to do their own thing and make it its own unique individual product within its own identity. I think that's the best thing they possibly could have done for it because just kind of making it feel in its own way, just really fun and exciting and really authentic and really very Australian fitting in with like how our scene feels and meshing well with the talent and all that. ANZ Champs has been an absolute pleasure to watch this season, and with these oh, matches yeah. coming up that just, like, look really, really good, and, like, there's a lot of interesting stuff to come in this bracket. I think the Grand Final is going to be amazing, and the Season Finals, the Semi Grand Finals, all going to be fantastic games. I just can't wait to watch more ANZ Champs, really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, speaking of international... I was going to say, yeah, that puts a nice yeah. bow on ANZ Champs. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll jump to one of my Aussies favorite abroad. segments, Aussies Abroad um yep. i it's so difficult i've i've got really good sleep routine at the moment so i'm just missing all of these games uh <laughs> but going yeah. back through and you know having a look i don't know if you've been watching uh, as much uh, international stuff bit. but um you know we've got our four sort of big teams uh dexter's mouse sports we'll start with them so uh the last episode i remember we covered their group in pro league and it didn't go very well um since then they played in the Blast Premier Qualifier, but it was also called Fantasy Expo Spring Cup 2021, and that's a lot of the teams in Europe right now are playing in these you know cups. Yeah. Um, but they lost to some team called Double Pony. Literally never heard of them in my life. Yeah. And then they had that was a BO one. It was close. I think it was like sixteen twelve. Um, but then they had a sixteen three loss to Pact, and I've just written after it. Yikes! Like this is, uh, it's. <sighs> The f- <laughs> what you know um it's amazing how we just spend the last uh 40 minutes talking about how australian cs locally is looking the best it ever has and yeah. then we see the top team just shitting the bed at every twist and turn it's so i think this team or is top team in big quotation marks because i don't think of them as that anymore no really. no, no. Uh, i think well, i'm more like renegades if this is their like their ceiling is really high but bro their floor is like down downstairs man they <laughs> that this happened um but then they also won snow sweet snow cup um and there was mm. it was good to see some good results there and again I, I fully appreciate the whole online era and it's impossible it's impossible to prepare against so many styles and so many teams but i don't know if if i put um you know like vitality or navi into these cups i just don't see them losing 16-3 to Pact after losing to Double Pony. Um, so I think keep an eye on things. I really would like that. It's It just isn't good optics after I their mean, Pro League sort of games. Like, you know what I mean? Look, you say keep an eye on things, but the way I'm keeping an eye on it, it's kind of like a car crash where you can't help. But yeah. Look kind of I, as as you try to look away. It's just, it's just a disaster at the moment. This got, Extreme Project has just looked really really terrible i like i can't sugarcoat it like, oh i was just... talking about mouse sports by the way i'm yeah. still saying Sorry, that. It, mouse sports just yeah, not yeah. Really good. um I, well they've got yeah. two big tests coming up um i was having a look and it's there they still need to qualify for iem summer um but then uh they're actually playing in an actual event uh dreamhack masters spring so one of those is like another one of these sort of open qual they'll run into a whole bunch of eu teams um and mm. then the other one is like i think their first map is against or first series is against Navi, um, or Vitality. I, I, I don't know. It's all it's all floating around in my head somewhere. But see, um, I got yeah, I got well, my uh, my terrible ocean, uh, international result teams mixed up for a second there. I think. Yeah, it well, dude, it happens. Yeah. But it's like it's so all over the place. Um, but you you mentioned it just then, and this was my sort of sentiment with mouse sports. It's mm. I'm confident that this team can push tenth in the world at best. But yeah. outside of that, they're sitting twentieth to tenth. Like that's their range. And unless they make some changes, 
I think this is their peak. I don't see Mouse Sports being a top 10 team in the world, to be honest. Not in the current form. And it's a shame because we're seeing really good players on there like Rops, who yeah. are obviously have this potential. I, but I, I, I feel I like at Rops the end of the contract, team. I feel like Rops is going to leave. I don't see why he's he'd be sticking around when he could get really... He could play on Astralis. Score. I've heard they've got us. <laughs> <laughs> I've got more Astralis jokes, don't worry. Um, uh, yeah. But yeah, so other Australians uh, who like to shit the bed, um, Extreme Mums. Um, <laughs> God, I love their their name is so silly. Um, then Extreme is a terrible name. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> um, um, they haven't really been playing a lot. Uh, I was looking through their all their HLTV. The last thing they played was the Fun Spark Ulti 2021. Um, I think Complexity also played at that, or Mouse, one of the others, but. Uh, the the big thing I was catching up on HLTV confirmed. Just you know, it's good to good to watch that every now and again. Um, and Stiko was on it. Uh, the I think he's on FPX at the moment, and he was talking mm. about in Prac, um, they play against the extreme mums, and they're like insane. They're like, oh bro, we can't beat them. And uh, you know, pro players talk about Prac and officials all the time, and how they're completely different. But we watch them in the server playing officials, and bro, they look horrible. Yeah, um, this, that, this project. I've it's now. Just, I'm pretty yeah. sure I've seen from a bunch of different people saying in prac they like they seem switched on and then they just can't convert it into officials. So, dude, I have never been so upset supporting mm. this core. But bro, it's like it's rough. It's really, really rough to be an Aussie fan internationally at the moment. It's just, just there's nothing I can get behind. Yeah. yeah well. Look, it's just, you see Extreme M, right? And they're supposed to be this, like, they're, they have historically and should on paper be right now the top team in terms of Oceanic core rosters, right? In terms of being able to, like, we saw all this hype build around them ever since the Starlighter Major, where, you know, they took that top four, finished that core, right? When they were still playing under Renegades. And, you know, there's so many people were going, oh, this is now, you know, now they're starting to break into their prime. And no, they peaked them. <laughs> um, yeah. They've been downhill ever since. But this is just like, if downhill was where we get, we were seeing them at the very least, um, while they were still under Renegades before that that major, I think they've gotten gone far lower than that. They're yeah. at the point where it's like, I just don't know what's happening with them. I don't know what they can do. They have to try and, I think... Because very early on, I was saying, right, um, when these moves, like, when it was rumoured, and then when the first lot of results came in, I did a video talking about the Mirage early on in Roundup, right, um, quite a few episodes back, and just kind of really disappointed by some of the ways that they were playing, but hopeful at that time that they would iron things out and be able to come back strong and do all that. But it's been so long now. That was yeah. ages ago. That yeah, was ago. Like, it feels like in that amount of time, like, um, if we were going to be seeing them coming back to it with this five, with things working out as they are, right, that they would be able to just do it, like, that they would have, that would have been enough time for them to do it. But now it's looking really scary. Now it's looking really just quite unfortunate. And I think at the very least you can say with something like Mouse Sports, right? Yeah, okay. They're also looking shit as well, um, not to sugarcoat things, but at the very least, you could pass off the excuse of, oh, well, at least the uh, IGL Dexter, I mean, um, you know, he's not internationally experienced. He's just kind of learning how to call for this, and there's so much of a gap between. But the Extremum core has been playing together for the better part of how yeah. many years now? Like, I agree. Even at the end of their 100 yeah. Thieves sort of thing, um, it was downhill, but they came back and it was like, it's as if they were still traveling downhill in that entire time they weren't playing. Came back and they were like all the way down here. And we were mm. like, what happened? You weren't even playing and you've gotten like, it's gotten worse. Yeah. So I don't know. The one thing that I've got um, sort of in my back pocket still clinging on to with um, the extreme mums is I still haven't seen them play in like pro league or at a big event against top teams. And there's a world where they just rock up and smash them. There's a world where that happens, but it's again I have to I have to put that so far in the back of my head. Otherwise, I just 
wake up and see the results. I just, have, I just cry. Um, mm. Because, oh man, I just, it, it's heartbreaking. Like, it's, look, here's the thing. I'm obviously being very extremely critical of Extremum right now and, like, of all this happening, right? But it's, it's just like, um, it's not at a point of like hating this team or hating what's happening. It's just disappointment. It's like you kind of just hope as a fan of these of these players and all that that you want to see them at their best. You're like, it feels like I'm like a disappointed parent at the moment. Like I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. It's I'm just it's like, like after seeing, the I just hype. want to see them excel. I want to yeah. see them do their best, but they're just not able to at the moment. After and I know seeing that they can, like exactly. that's, yeah, that's like exactly. they've got this potential, but they're just not, yeah, they're it's not there. Getting to the point where it's like I don't know, you know, when to sort of go. The prime has passed because you know we know renegades can and are working towards being, you know, the next sort of extremum, the next Aussies overseas, right? At what point is it like, oh, you know, the ah, the fanatic era is dead or whatever. And it's like, we're waiting mm. for this next sort of like, you know, Swedish team to rise up or, um, you know, uh, what are they called? MIBR is dead. Now we were watching Furia. Like when does Extremum die and when do Renegades take over? Um, it's not something nice to think about, but it's it, it, it's, it's getting closer way. to that yeah. than it is the Extremum sort of um, turning things around. So if you want my answer for that, I think that's uh, that'll come... That could come if Renegades were to go internationally full time. I think it would yeah. accelerate that process. But I think we already know uh, from what these players have said that they they really don't want to do that. They kind of still want to play here. Yeah. And obviously, that's a very personal decision. But and um, can't blame them for wanting to stay here and be at home, right? But it would be really interesting to see how they like Renegades would go on. It'd be a really cool. What if? Yeah, it'd be yeah, it'd be a very interesting what if for not just them but for the scene overall. Mm. If Renegades, instead of being able to being here playing tournaments locally, um, while at the same time then going overseas whenever they could, actually stayed in Malta and like grind it out a lot of the rest of the year. Yeah, but you know, obviously, you know, if the players don't want to do that, can't force them to do that. Um, this is what what their decision is. That's how they want to go about it, and. I'm sure that they can still find really good results going about it with their approach. Yeah. Um, It's just a really interesting what if. We'll we'll use that to jump in, yeah, to the other two squads. Um, We'll quickly do Renegades, I guess, because we're already talking about them. They're home. Um, They, you know, we know they went over for their European vacation, um, had a good time, lost in Pro League, lost in Katowice. Uh, Mm. I, I say that jokingly, but... Um, what I'm really cool, like interested in seeing now is what they've brought back from EU because we'll get to see that trickle down when they prac, you know, order chiefs, all that. So hopefully, um, get to see some really cool stuff that they picked up, uh, in Europe and then watch it sort of disperse itself into the region. And uh, other than that, I don't really know when we're going to see them play again, uh, in Australia. Yeah, I mean, there hasn't really been much, like, information that's come out about that. There haven't really been, since they've come home, they've just kind of been, instead of relaxing, like, we haven't seen them in the server. Yeah. And they would have they would have had them. to deal with two weeks quarantine as well, so. Yeah, well, the players, um, they were quarantining. Some of them were streaming from, like, they managed to get grab themselves a PC, um, and, like, were literally streaming from their hotel quarantines. <laughs> yeah. Um, just playing, like, FPL and things like that um obviously still you know in the cs grind obviously still in that but locally uh here at home and it's going to be very interesting to see um what happens from here whether or not they just continue like um well first off like what are they going to enter here um or can they enter well, they can they can obviously play. I mean, I don't think there's any reason why they couldn't play in Z Champs or something like that. Well, yeah, they they could uh, potentially be on the invite list for the next season, right? Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how it works with um off the top of my head with them getting into ESC Premier if they were to play that, but somehow I feel like that wouldn't be as much of a focus for them. I feel no, like if they were course. to play anything locally, and Z Champs would be the main thing that they would go in for, but. I don't know whether playing those would be entirely the most beneficial thing for them. I think that 
at this point, even though order is looking incredibly, incredibly strong, the only thing that they'd really get from playing uh, things locally at this point um, would just be getting the free wins, pretty much. And I and I say free because like they showed themselves throughout the entirety of last year to just be that f- much further ahead than everyone else. And I still think they are. Yeah, I think that despite how good order is looking, they're not renegades yet. But renegades, if they come back to playing here locally, yeah, we're gonna see pretty much a repeat of last year for them honestly no i 100% um, agree which is why i really would have loved again it's why i really on like would have loved to see that what if if they were in eu longer to see what potential they could have pushed themselves towards yeah. but you know hey obviously it, it is what obviously it is. it is what it is um regardless of whatever they do here uh, of course they'll you know um i'm sure they'll clean up they'll have themselves a good time and they'll still be improving it's just the rate at which they keep improving compared to playing international teams is a little bit different but um moving on from renegades we're uh gonna be looking at jks and complexity call on roll we uh title though we i think you know things have been weird for complexity um Mm. we have a question coming up about them too um, but they were out of all the uh, you know teams we looked at at least uh, that have you know an Australian sort of part within them um, in the pro league. They were the only one who actually made it into the playoffs, and that's kind of where we left the last episode, saying, "Oh well, yeah. you know, wow, they did it." Um, and I think they had some really decent results. They managed to beat Virtus Pro, who are looking really good, really strong mm. um, team at the moment. And they managed to beat uh, Na'Vi. I think Huge. that that, yeah. that was still when Flamey was in the lineup, but I know one of the maps bit was standing in. But still, it's a win against Simple, um, a win against a top 10 team in the world. Uh, and then they ended up getting bopped by uh, NIP pre-device <laughs> um, in yep. the quarterfinals. So I think it, they finished... Um, I think the way Pro League works, even though it was the quarters, it's a fifth to sixth finish. Yeah, or if not, it's a seven to eight like quarterfinal finish. But uh, I, I think this team, fifth, for, for my money, six, fifth to six, six, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, this team to me is just mouse sports, but instead of that 10 to 20th in the world, they're like fifth to 12th in they're the sense that, pushing higher, yeah. Yeah, in the sense that I still think that um, this squad pound for pound is better, uh, mm. but it's still one or two changes away from. Um, actually being the the juggernaut that they want it to be. And unfortunately, I think JKS is the problem with the team because yeah. he's meant to be... We just haven't seen anything like we know he can be this superstar, this lurk, whatever. I don't know what's happened, but it's just we're not seeing it. And um, I, I know we're going to talk about this uh, a little more shortly, so I'll, I'll leave it there, but... Uh, yeah. outside of that i don't think this team is going to be going any further than having some really good maps every now and again when the you know the flash and the pan stuff happens bvp you beat navi and then you're just going to lose to nip or astralis or you know whoever it might be on the day um but outside of that i think they've been having out of all the teams we cover on this show <laughs> the best results um the only thing that they've got coming up, they're also playing in the DreamHack Masters Spring. I'm pretty sure Complexity are the ones playing against Vitality in their opening match. So, yeah, that that's true. That's, yeah, cool. That's good. Yeah. Um, but Complexity, like it's it's kind of a bit of a mixed bag, but I think it's still a more promising bag than the teams we just looked at. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I think that I think now more than ever they're starting to work out some of those kinks and starting to like get themselves into a better form but obviously with any project um it takes time to build and it takes time to you know um be able to get themselves up to that level right but it's still i think there's still a lot of promise to come here i think jks um i think it's starting to look maybe a little bit better i mean we'll we'll get more into jks in a moment but um I think overall, as a five, the team is starting to look like they're meshing better together. We're starting to see some better results because at, at the start, you got to remember where they were coming from. Complexity looked really bad for a while, but now they've gotten some, you know, pretty solid results again. That two zero win against Navi, that two one against VP, taking a map with NIP, free device error, of course. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some really, really interesting stuff coming up from Complexity there. So 
yeah, really interesting to see international CS at the moment. Yeah. Um, and on a side note of that, before we get into the JKS stuff in a sec, I want to say that international C- CS at the moment too is definitely looking to be looking um, a lot more interesting than it's looked in quite a while. I mean, I just obviously just touching on it, um, nothing related to Australian CS, but that device to nip move has got everyone talking and for good reason and i'm just very keen to see how that goes too there's a lot of really interesting stuff happening overseas you just got to bring dexter in as your igl and boom best team (laughs) in the world baby yeah hey um no definitely i think that it's uh i look at the top 10 and whether or not there's a team that has an aussie in it or not i think Mm. it's one of those kind of like at any given day i think anything can of course asterisks with the whole online stuff but we're starting to see um yeah, so on Cologne, uh, they're, they're looking at LAN in the arena, no crowd this year, which I know they wanted that for Pro League in Malta and it just couldn't happen. But uh, yeah. we're slowly inching back toward sort of, you know, what post-COVID reality is going to look like uh, for mm-hmm. LAN play. And um, if you want to scale that back to the Australian perspective, you know, we'll be having ANZ champs in a studio where all the teams are there. Uh, you know, order Renegades, all that. It'll be easier to travel overseas, whether it's in a bubble or whatever. Yeah. Um, all of this stuff is starting to come back on the cards now. And Thank that is kind that. of, it's kind of what Australia needs to be relevant. Um, otherwise, we're just kind of trapped against yeah. each other. But I think, yeah, I think especially Renegades, as I was saying, like um, them going overseas, the more they're able to do it, the better they're going to look. 100%. Yeah. And just in um, general. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we mentioned at the start, we don't have a feature, but we have a new section. Um, and I encourage anyone who thinks they might want to ask us something or have any questions. This was completely like out of the blue as well. We didn't. Yeah. Put we this had, we to anyone. This, this found this its way, <laughs> found its way to my, my desk. Um, and we have, <laughs> we have a question from uh, Mr. Michael Carmody, longtime supporter of the show. First time caller in era, I'm told. Um, <laughs> Let's let's play the que- le- le- the question. All right, long time listener, first time caller. Uh, just wanting to come in here at the moment, and I wanted to talk about Complexity's games against Big at 1:30 this morning, where they ended up going down 19-16, 19-16. I was very disappointed. My boy JKS at least got an honourable sort of score, but I want more. I want more. Tell me, tell me, panel. Will I get more from JKS and Complexity this year? Well, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. MJ. We uh, appreciate all your work and thank you so much for sending in a question. Um, and again, we've been alluding to it. It's about JKS. And um, I apologize that you stayed up to watch him play because, um, you know, essentially, will JKS be seeing a return to form and become the superstar that we know he can be? But on this complexity lineup, that was, you know, for the most part, what I understood the question to be. Um, no, no is my short answer. Um, I would be surprised if I did, because uh, I think given the resources at complexities, you know, fingertips and, um, you know, there's players on this team like Rush, who I think mm. before being on complexity wasn't really in very good form. Uh, Config was in terrible form before this project. Um, and then, you know, they came together, uh, of course, with Obo at the time. And I think the team was really good. I think the team legitimately could have been top five um, on a good day. And now they're bringing JKS in. And I just don't understand why he isn't meshing well into it. I think that's essentially the problem. He doesn't mesh well with this team, whether it's the yeah. team not working for him or he is just, I don't know. Um, but I think it's like super super low odds that we see the sort of consistency in terms of superstar jks in this lineup ever and that's why i think i think this this he you know there's so many other players i could take out or i could take jks out and put so many other players in and i feel like this team would like fly um yeah but that's just my thoughts on the topic uh, you know i don't want to hang shit on jks obviously he's our arguably our our best player um, to ever come out of this uh, region in global offensive. But I don't know. I'm, I'm just basing it off the games. I see the results. 
and uh, what I kind of want to see from complexity and from JKS. Yeah, well, as you said, um, he's you know he's the best player that's come out of uh, this region by far. And for the record, he came from Brisbane. So uh, any of you from Sydney or Melbourne, yeah, uh, yeah um, just know that the best CS player that ever came from this country came from the city of Brisbane. Um, just putting that on it's, the record there for you, MJ. Just the little yeah. victories that we're going to take here. Yeah, uh, we might not have an IEM, but we have competent. We have the the best player that ever got produced from this region. But um, look, he's. I think that as of late, I actually think that he has been looking a little bit better. Um, again, MJ, you brought up specifically the big match that uh, came out, but I think there. Um, like just looking at purely at the statistics, JKS wasn't necessarily the problem in terms of fragging power. He over the series went um was actually second highest on the team, uh, just below config, right? Where Rush was actually the worst performing player in that in that series. But you know, then again, right? If you look a bit further out, um, what do, what is JKS bringing to the team? I firmly believe that he can bring fragging power. I believe that JKS has shown himself over the years to be probably one of the most mechanical players that can be picked up in terms of the international circuit um, on his sort of level where um, he's kind of known for making these kind of, you know, solid rifle plays where he's been able to just go in, tap some heads, you know, make the showy plays and stuff like that. Um, Showing himself to have real impact as a fragger, but not being necessarily like the brainy player or anything like that but i think teams still need that i think that um one of the biggest things that cs teams need is they need good good mechanics they need that sharp player to be able to you know just provide a bit of extra momentum and just push them through when when coupled with a good igl and when coupled with you know good teams surrounding them to be able to enable them to make those plays right that's where you start to see the impact i think complexity i think they just need a bit more time personally I think that um, maybe while before you could have said something along the lines of that they're looking like something needs to be changed, I think whatever reason, recently they're starting to look a bit stronger. I think we're starting to see points to which they're able to take some games, we're able to see some strong points coming out from them, and hopefully they can continue off that momentum and hopefully push through. But I think right now, changing players putting jks somewhere else is just going to kill that momentum yeah so give it a bit of time see how he goes and i think that if uh jks doesn't work in europe with complexity um that there's still plenty of places he could go but i i think that there's plenty of potential for him overseas i think there's plenty of potential for him on a good roster and i think that this complexity project i think it will work out in the long run at at least i'm hopeful at least i'm very hopeful (laughs) yeah fingers crossed yeah fingers crossed Cool. Well, MJ, I hope we answered your question, and I'm sorry if it wasn't uh, <laughs> what you wanted to hear. Um, I don't know, <laughs> uh, but we we really do appreciate the 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 question yeah, sure. in the sense that we would like more questions if anyone has them. Um, so uh, whether you DM myself, whether you DM Luther, get in the comments on YouTube or Twitter, someone will spot it and it will find its way to us. Um, and as long as it's relevant, I'm sure we'll yeah. have time to bring it up, talk about it. I'm not expecting hundreds of questions to flow in. Uh, but, yeah, you know, but... If, we, if we find a good one like that, and especially that was really good because it's on, on topic with the complexity discussions that we were having. Um, I would love to keep having this in the show. You yeah, know, for sure. To, well, especially to um, what's right in. Especially having, um, you know, if you want to submit a question as well, um, feel free to s- submit an audio or video clip of yourself as well, because that always makes it kind of fun hearing from other people, you know, um, with questions like that. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see our Twitter ads on the screen, but for everyone on audio versions, at it's 2 sbs on Twitter for me, at Shalebo with two H's, S-H-H-L-E-E-B-O for Ash. Both our Twitter DMs are open, uh, so ready for you to submit some questions um or just you know have a chat um you know we're always here we're always ready to talk some cs and we're always um and talk shit (laughs) oh yeah for sure always at least i am at least i'm more than (laughs) welcome in my dms um but yeah i think that sort of brings us uh cleanly into the end of the show this is episode six day 93 um and cheers as always for watching again you said at the start but i i 
I feel like I have to reiterate at the end. Thank you so much to uh, everybody who asked us where Roundup was, all that. Um, you know, personally, I don't want to promise that, you know, we'll definitely be doing it every two weeks, but for us, we'll it's all to. about, yep. yeah, if, if there's enough to do, sometimes there literally will be weeks where there is nothing to talk about. Um, but for us, it's about, uh, yeah, you know, the, the next episode, if we miss one, is going to be jam-packed because we will try and cover everything. Um, mm, yeah. It means a lot to us. So thank you to everybody. Um, and I guess I'll send everybody towards all of the social media stuff that you can catch us on. Um, you know, we just did our Twitters, but be sure to check out all of the, you know, snowball stuff where this content is coming out. Um, articles on the website. the website. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, heaps of stuff there on Twitter. There's all kinds of stuff. Um, heaps of R6 content at the moment. If I really like R6. Lots of really good stuff coming out from Mr. Ducky. Um, mm. uh, I prefer that to his Valorant work. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, so yeah, massive love from them. We'll and again, again, yeah, actually, sorry. I, I have a brain, brain <laughs> life. Did I just say a word? Um, and again, massive love to Blue Microphones for uh, powering the show and... Uh, making sure that you guys can hear my my radio voice that goes with my radio face. Um, otherwise, um, I, have you got anything else to you want to jump in there with? I think I think that about says it. Thank you everyone once again for tuning into Roundup. It's always a pleasure to make this show happen. Always a pleasure to work with everyone at the Snowball. Huge thanks again to Blue Microphones. Cannot stress that enough. They've been absolutely great to have on as our presenting partner. Um, we'll try and get new episodes out soon. Hopefully not as long of a hiatus, but hopefully we'll be back and get some more of this content your way and hopefully a feature for the next one stay tuned thank you all for watching and we'll see you next time